Hello, today I want to introduce the PAC controller software, the Parker Automation Manager software. I'm going to do that by showing you a demo program and then walking you through in terms of modifying that program. Let's get started. Go into your Internet Explorer, go to parkermotion.com, then on the right hand side you'll see the FAQ button. Go ahead and click there. That'll take you to the frequently asked questions. Go into the pack controller. This will take you to the pack FAQs and then click on quick start. And that will take you to this FAQ. And then right click, save target as. Go ahead and save to your desktop. Go ahead and open it up. Unzip it. The README has some information in regards to the connections and the IP addresses. I'll be including that information in the videos today. So go ahead and launch the Parker Automation Manager software and then you can load the project go into file open and then uh, go ahead and navigate to your unzip file under the pack project as the pack C3 XPR sample project. While this is loading, I'll go over a couple other things. So, in the FAQ as well, there are video FAQs that show you how to configure the Compax 3, the EtherCAT connections, setting the device type using the C3 Servo Manager, walking you through the configuration and then the settings specifically for the EtherCAT master and then the DS402 scaling and then how to then download it and then confirm the motion in the optimization screen in the C3 servo manager. I'm going to presume that has already been done. If not, you need to do that first before using the PAC controller software. There's also a um, how to set the scaling for the Parker mechanics in the Parker automation manager software. This can also be used in terms of setting the increments for the feedback for the Compax 3. I'll go over that in the next video. And then there's also an additional information in terms of the Express HMI settings for the PAC controller and also a video showing how to set the um, PC's Ethernet address. You'll notice under the pack notes that the default address for the pack controller is 192.168.10.50 and then the subnet is 255.255.0.0. So go into your control panel, go into the network and internet settings, network and sharing center, under your local area network if you're plugged in. Go into Properties, Internet Protocol Version 4, IPv4, click on Properties, and select Use the following IP address, and go ahead and set that to something other than .50 on the very end, and then the same subnet. Go ahead and press OK. Close, close, and close. You need to connect your PC to the PAX X2 controller. The X3 is set to UDP instead of TCP. So you need to use the X2 first to establish communication. If you want to verify, open up an Internet Explorer. Go to 192.168.10.50.
and you can see the X2, that's the connector you're actually connected to, that's the machine name. You can see that it's static. You can also then change the X3. I'd already changed mine to dot sixty, but the default is uh, dynamic on the X3, which is why you won't be able to connect to it. So under the X2, and then under the system settings, that's the machine name, and then about the pack has the part number. So if you're not sure, if you can't see the label on the side of it, here's the C, meaning it's a CNC unit. So we're talking. Let's go ahead and open up the Parker Automation Manager software. If you double click on the device, click on Scan Network. And then you can see your pack controller. Go ahead and press OK. The green light indicates that you are communicating to the pack controller. It does not mean you're actually online with the PLC, but it is communicating.